Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you another foundation design example, but this time it will be with an offset column. I'm going to approach the design calculations as if I was doing a sort of what we call a fag packet calculation, which is going to be a very, very quick way of designing or checking a foundation design. Let me know in the comment section if you like this style of design calculations, or if you'd prefer if I did it in the more sort of formal way of writing design calculations. The reason I kind of want to show you this kind of fag packet way of doing a design calculation is just to show you that it can be done really, really quickly. But quick doesn't mean that you skip steps. It means that you'll be able to do things more efficiently. So for all the design examples, which I do, and I think it's really important that you do this for all your design calculations, is to draw a quick diagram or a quick sketch to make sure that it's really clear on what you're designing and that you're not missing out any important bits of information. So what I would like to do is to draw a plan diagram and also a section through. I then like to mark up the forces which are being applied to the foundation. In this example, the column is going to transfer an actual load, a shear force and the moment. So the column's center line is 500 mil away from the center line of the foundation. Because of the eccentricity from the column, there's going to be an additional eccentric moment which we'll need to apply when we design the foundation. So the first thing I'm going to check is the bearing pressure, and that's the stress that the foundation is applying to the ground. So P, the actual force, needs to be broken down into dead and live. In this case, we've got a dead load of 750 kilonewtons and a live load of 250 kilonewtons. There's also a shear force of 200 kilonewtons and a moment of 100 kilonewton meters. Like I mentioned earlier, there's going to be a moment due to eccentricity. So to calculate this moment, all we need to do is times the actual force by the eccentric distance, which is 500 mil or 0.5 meters, and we get an eccentric moment of 500 kilonewton meters. So to work out the stress, there are two equations which we need to know. The first is force over area, and the second one is the moment equation derived from what I call the Missy equation. So I was taught the Missy equation in university. And essentially all it is, is the moment m over i, the second moment of area, which is equal to the stress over y, where y is the distance to the neutral axis. In this case, for a rectangular section, it's half of the thickness of the section. For a rectangular section, the second moment of area i is bd cubed over 12. Rearrange the Missy equation so that you're finding stress. And once you've rearranged it, you get 6 times m, the moment, over bd squared. So going back to the example, we can essentially plug in all the values into the formula. The moment from the column is reversible, so it can act in either direction, which is why there's a plus or minus next to it. The eccentric moment caused by the offset column is not reversible, which is why there's only a plus sign next to it. Once you've plugged in the numbers, we'll essentially get a maximum and a minimum stress. In this case, the maximum stress is 244 kilonewtons per meter squared, and the minimum is 200 kilonewtons per meter squared. It's quite useful to draw the stress diagram when you're designing a foundation. It's a quick and easy way to see if you've kind of got the right values because you're going to see if you've got a positive or a negative value for your stress. So the next check is going to be the sliding check. And for this check, we actually want to ignore the live load contribution from the point load. And this is because gravity loads actually benefits the sliding resistance. So we want to check that for instance, if there is no applied live loads, that the structure is still going to be stable or the foundation is not going to slide. We're going to assume that the coefficient of friction between the foundation and the ground is going to be 0.4. The value of 0.4 is going to be quite typical if your foundation is going to be cast on some concrete blinding. So to calculate the force of resistance to sliding, we need to apply the actual gravity load and also to include the self-weight of the concrete foundation and then we need to multiply it by the coefficient of friction. Plug the values into the equation and we get a force to resist sliding of 345 kilonewtons. We want to apply a 0.9 reduction factor to the force that we just calculated and this reduction factor is essentially our safety factor. So our sliding force is the shear force which is 200 kilonewtons and we want to essentially apply a safety factor to this, so we want to apply a 1.5 multiplication factor to this value, which gives us 300 kilonewtons. Because the applied sliding force is less than the force of resistance, therefore the design passes. 
So now the final check is the overturning check. And basically the overturning check is the check to make sure that the foundation cannot topple over. And I find it useful to redraw the diagram underneath the check which I'm doing. I want to make sure that I include all the critical dimensions and all the forces which are going to be applicable for this overturning check. In this case, all the forces are going to be applicable for this overturning check, including the self-weight of the foundation, which acts obviously in the middle of the foundation. So like with the sliding check, we want to check that the overturning moment is going to be less than the restoring moment. And we want to take moments about the point A, which is the lower left hand corner, which I have marked on my diagram in red. So my sign convention, the overturning moment is any moment going counterclockwise and any restoring moment going clockwise. So the first overturning moment is caused by the shear force. So the shear force is acting horizontally and to calculate the moment, we just need to times the perpendicular distance, in this case, half a meter. Then we can simply add on the moment applied from the column, which is 100 kilonewton meters. So now we need to work out the restoring moment. And just like the sliding check, we're only going to consider the dead load actual load, which is 750 kilonewtons. And to work out the moment, we just need to times by the distance, which is one meter. Then we want to add on the contribution from the self-weight of the foundation. And in the previous sliding check, we worked out that the self-weight is 112 kilonewtons. So then we need to multiply it by the distance, which is 1.5 meters. So we work out that the overturning moment is 200 and the restoring moment is 918. Like with the sliding check, we want to multiply the overturning moment by 1.5 and the restoring moment by a reduction factor of 0.9. And this gives us an overturning moment of 300 and a restoring moment of 826. Because the overturning moment is less than the restoring moment, this means that the design passes. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you've got any questions, do drop me a comment. If you want to see more of these videos, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.